Hi everyone, this is Sharan here. Welcome to my channel. Today is the third day of exploratory data analysis using the Titanic data set. Uh, so as I have explained in the beginning of uh, this particular exploratory data analysis and feature engineering series, what we are going to do is we are going to take up different scenarios like different data sets and we will be at a high level going through the three important steps that will be done on the exploratory data analysis, which is the data analysis, or including univariate, bivariate and multivariate as you see on, my, on the whiteboard. And we will be going through the data transformation, the different techniques, uh, different types of data transformation that are generally used across different types of data set. And the final one is the feature creation, like new feature creation, like the different methods of creating new feature based on the existing feature, as well as like maybe as we go on to the other data sets, uh, we will also be seeing like how to make use of an, uh, uh, an outside data, the data that is not given to us, like how to bring in an outside data as a new feature. So these are all uh, the major building blocks that we will be, like uh, we can also say it as pillars of uh, uh, EDA as well as feature engineering, which we will be going through based on different scenarios. The reason why we are doing this is uh, with experience, like uh, the uh, your skills on the exploratory data analysis as well as feature engineering improves with practice. So that's the main reason why I am doing this, like I am picking up different scenarios and then doing all these activities across the different data set so that we, like as you learn, as you spend uh, like 10 days on the exploratory data analysis and feature engineering, uh, when you get to practice on different types of data, you in, like you improve your ability of doing the data analysis as well as feature engineering. So now having said that, moving on to the third day of uh, Titanic dataset exploratory and feature engineering. So today we are going to see about the feature creation, like new feature creation. So uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, as you see on my screen, I'm going to continue from where we left in the previous session. So we have completed the data transformation and we did the correlation on based on the final numeric data that were available to us. So moving on to the next one, which is the new feature creation. So what we are going to do is we are going to use the same uh, pattern. Whatever changes that we are going to do on the training data set, we are going to do the exact same on the test data set as well. So as explained previously, in a real life scenario, there won't be any training and test data set. There'll be one data set. We will do all the feature engineering, everything on one data set. And while testing the model, we try to divide it into training and test, and then we build the model. But in case of title competitions, what happens is that test data set would be separately provided to us with the same number of features. So when we are trying to do some data transformation and try to add new features to it, what we need to do is we need to ensure that whatever changes that we are doing are being done to both training and test data set in the same exact same way. So if, for example, if we represent a uh, gender male as uh, zero in the training data set, and let's say if we represent a gender male as uh, uh, as one in the test data set, like uh, zero in training data set and one in test data set. So then while building the model, like uh, the accuracy will be like very bad because like uh, the model has been trained on a different assumption. And then whereas when we put it into use on the test data set, uh, the meanings are different. So we need to ensure that whatever transformations that we are doing should be exactly same. Similarly for categorical uh, values as well, for example, if you are doing the bucket based on age, the exact same logic should be used on training as well as the test data set. It shouldn't be like one is different from the other. Uh, it should be exactly same. So now moving on to the creation of new feature. So what we are going to do is we know that uh, the attribute sim, sim sp means that the number of siblings on and spouse and part ch is that the number of parents or children. So as you see here, the distribution number of siblings or spouses are aboard on the Titanic ship. Like, so we are considering only people are with them as passengers and the number of parents or children aboard the Titanic. Uh, so what we are going to do is we are going to add them all together to, to, to know about the family size, the total size of the particular family. So what we are going to do is, so this, this is a new feature that we are going to create called as family size. And we are going to add uh, both the number of siblings, spouse or number of parents and children. And what we can do is 
maybe in this particular uh, case uh, so in this particular case what we can do is after creating after creating the new uh, attribute if uh, so in this case uh, after creating family size we can maybe drop off uh, the parch as well as sim sp from the model so i'm going to just uh, print the top five uh, rows from here yeah so as you see now what's happening is we have created the new attribute called family size based on these two based on these two attributes so now this can be taken as uh, like we can use family size and then ignore the other two uh, features and then see how the model is performing because the knowledge that is present the uh, the amount of information that is present in this as well as these two columns are combined together and we have created a new column and still it makes sense so it's it's not like the the the, the we are we are trying to add uh, numeric values of two different columns which are totally not related to each other. So we are trying to add something that is related to each other and it makes lot of, lots of sense. So I guess like family size could potentially replace the other two features. So this is one of the new features that can be added. And, and now what we can do is we can do the analysis based on the family size. So here we can see depending upon the family size, what is the total now count, like right? number of people across all these values and the mean value here is based on the survival like number of people who survived so here as well what we can see is we can see uh, family size of one which means that people who are traveling alone had a slightly lower probability of survival like people who are traveling together like family size of two up to four like family size up to four seems to be highest like the survival rate was 72 percentage but after that like when the family size is too big again their uh, survival chances start reducing so this is something that uh, can be quite interesting and then can should be used for making the prediction and moving on to the next one so next one is kind of like we are trying to multiply the age and fair and then see if the values that we are getting by multiplying these two values could help in improving the uh, improving the accuracy so all these uh, all these things that we are trying to do now it's kind of like trial and error so maybe they are not helpful at all to the model maybe they are they try to like uh, uh, reduce the quality of the output of uh, quality of the prediction that we are trying to make but it's, it is something that is good to check out uh, because that could be some kind of a uh, relationship between the age as well as the fare and there is nothing wrong in creating a new feature by multiplying these two and then see how it impacts how it helps in in, in our uh, final model so now we can check out uh, after making the changes we can check out whether the values are uh, whether the values are multiplied correctly so here we can see age, fair, and the new column. So if we can, what we can do is now uh, this particular new feature, we can try to replace age as well as fair and try to replace it with the new column and then see how the model accuracy is working. Otherwise, they can, we can check uh, by retaining one of these age as well as fair, one of these columns along with the new one and then see how the models are performing. So it's kind of trial and error. So in, in, uh, so in most data analysis and feature engineering step, what happens is we try to create a new feature, we, go, go, we build the model, we see how the model is performing, and then it's kind of like coming back and forth. So it's not like we complete the data analysis, move on to the feature engineering, uh, create all those data transformation, move on to creation of new feature. So the, it, it is nothing like uh, step by step approach it's all kind of iterative so we try to we try to come up with a new feature we see how it is performing in the model and then again come back we try to make some changes and then try it out try it out again so it's kind of all everything is iterative and everything kind of runs in parallel uh, so that's about the other 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 way of creating a new attribute like kind of multiplying or com combining the existing attributes and then creating a new one and then the next one is the titles so we have used this in the previous session to replace uh, the age wherever it was null. Uh, so what we are doing exactly here is uh, that the titles are present within the name column. So if you can see, uh, the title is uh, actually present in the name column for each and every single record which has which have the details. Uh, so as you see here, like a Mr. and a Miss and so on. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to extract uh, the title from uh, from the name column. So what we are doing is we are going to do string extract 
and we are going to extract the title and there are a large number of titles like as you see here there are so many titles for each and every individual so what we are going to do is we are going to combine them into five different categories so we are going to make create the categories as mr miss mrs master and others as you see here uh, so any rare uh, title will be classified as others and uh, everything else will be classified into these four categories so we are trying we are creating these five categories for uh, title and uh, we are going to see if maybe this makes any improvement to the, to the existing model. Uh, so when I execute this, so the same logic, whatever we are trying to, uh, uh, so this is already been executed. Uh, so maybe that's why it is, uh, it is like it's already been converted and then I'm trying to like I'm trying to re-execute it so it's throwing up an error but right it should work fine for you like if when you try to re-execute when you try to execute uh, uh, after copying the code from my data repository so this is one way so where the name problem as such is not at all like useful for any analysis or uh, for uh, making the prediction but what happens here in this case is the the title information that is present in the name seems like to be useful in making the prediction as well as in making in the like for our analysis uh, so so i think that this is something something that can be also evaluated when you have a new data set to see how to how to use make use of the existing data set maybe that is not uh, of much use how to use a part of it uh, uh, for our benefit and coming moving on to the last one is the fair one. So what we what we have seen is we have seen that the fair um, attribute as such was huge in range. The like majority of them were below hundred, whereas the range were was going up to five hundred. So what we are trying to do is we are going to divide this into different quartiles. So I'm going to use Q cut. I'm going to cut this fair uh, range into thirteen equal parts and maybe assign the name to each one of them. So what we are going to do is we are going to cut this into 13 equal parts and do the values ranging from zero to, um, from zero to 12, uh, from sorry, one to 13. So when I execute this, let me show you the data here. So I'm just going to print the top five rows here and then show you what happens to the, uh, to the attribute fair. So as you see here, the fair column is now replaced with the categories. So what would happen is this code here will divide it into 13 equal parts and will assign the value ranging from one to 13. So if we want to check the range of fair now, so we can do an unit uh, to see how the values are distributed. So as you see here, the value ranges from one to 13 and yeah, starting with one up to 13 and and the advantage here is the the, the values of fair were was heavily skewed towards the towards the lower end um, like majority of the fair were below right like below the range of uh, 100 so now by by separating them by dividing them into equal 13 eight 13 equal parts and then assigning a name for each one of them we are able to we are able to we are able to maybe improve the accuracy of the model later which otherwise uh, if we directly use the integer values might not be very accurate uh, so maybe if you are trying to if you have already executed the previous data transformation code to convert the fair column into an integer and then if you try to implement the quarterly track maybe it might not be working especially if you want to stick on to 13 12 parts so maybe if you are if you are going with conversion of the attribute into an integer type and then if you want to use the tutet i would say i would suggest maybe in, reduce the uh, reduce the like the number of paths from 13 to much maybe slightly lower otherwise like if you are going to stick on with the with the float data type uh, if you can direct, if you directly execute this this should be fine so what we have covered so far is for the titanic data set we have covered the different analysis that can be done the different methods to do the data transformation as well as different uh, ways of creating and a new feature so all these that we are trying to learn is very specific to this particular data set so what we are going to do is we are going to pick up uh, two different scenarios over the next few days and then we are going to try all these data exploration and feature engineering across different data sets uh, so that there will be some kind of learning so whatever we have learned uh, today uh, so it's not the only way to do them. 
so there are multiple ways of doing what we have learned so far so what we are so what we are going to do is we are going to practice it uh, uh, by exploring like a different data sets and then see what new we can learn from these different data set what i would suggest to you is i would suggest that uh, after watching all these videos try to execute the code and then uh, see if you are able to understand every line that is present in the code also like based on whatever you have learned try to pick up a new data set and then and then re-execute or try to come up with your own uh, data exploration as well as feature engineering uh, scripts and uh, even for the same data set, what I would suggest is I would suggest uh, along with all, all the analysis that we have done so far, try to come up with your own analysis and then see how it helps in uh, how it helps in bringing out the insights from the data. Uh, so maybe the analysis or the features that you are building might be useful when we would go on and build the model. So for now, uh, the objective is to do as much analysis as possible, as much feature engineering as possible, and then bring all of them. And we can finally, while building the model, we can we can decide which needs to be used and which needs to be dropped. Uh, so that's it for now. I hope you have learned something new today. If you have learned something new, please give a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel. If you think this might be helpful for any of your friends who is learning data science, please share it with them as well. Bye for now. See you in the next session.